A week of severe weather and thunderstorms is going to pave the way for a much more potent storm system by the weekend, likely to bring higher end severe weather for many Americans. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this, uh, what is it, Tuesday, I believe, right? April 22nd. And hopefully we're having a wonderful start to the week out there. Hopefully we had a good Monday and uh, a week of active and not so active weather at the same time. We are going to see thunderstorms. We are going to see some severe weather. But I think the real show is about a week from now as we get towards the end of this week and into the start of next week. And we'll break down both threats for you in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. It's a great way to stay up to date with the latest model data and my analysis and breakdown of those models on the channel. Also want to say thank you to our tier two and three channel members and all channel members in general. I appreciate you folks. And uh, really during these slower times of the year, uh, the channel would not be possible and would not be able to run without you. So I appreciate that. Uh, you really do mean the world to me. All right, with that said, let's dive on into things and start talking weather on this Tuesday. Now, taking a look at satellite imagery, you can see we've got a storm spinning away up into Canada. This was the storm from the weekend, actually, that moved through Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Missouri, and eventually all the way up to where it's at now. Unfortunately, slash maybe kind of fortunately for those of us that need some rainfall, the cold front that was associated with it has kind of stalled out across the southeast, and you can see it already here uh, on satellite loop. This area of increased moisture and uh, just thunderstorm activity this morning is due to that stalled out frontal boundary. That's just going to sit here for a couple days, and we're likely to see days of afternoon storms, uh, almost kind of a summer-like pattern here as we end out April before, again, by the time we get about a week from now, a new storm is going to come in off the Pacific, and you can't see it yet, but eventually it will dive down into the desert southwest and then eject out into the plains, and it's that storm that I think will bring a much more organized severe weather threat uh, again in about seven days or so. Uh, we'll break that down for you as well in today's video. Uh, now let's take a look uh, at uh, kind of what it looks like here in the upper levels uh, as we uh, get going here on this Tuesday. Not a lot of vorticity out there. You can see one little ribbon here into the southeast. That's that stalled out frontal boundary. That's why we're likely to see some storms, maybe even a little bit of severe weather over the Carolinas, Georgia, maybe even back down into Alabama and Mississippi this afternoon. Other than that, though, you're really not seeing a lot happening. Now, I do want to bring your attention to one thing. Uh, it might be hard to see, but you see how these um, uh, contour values here have a little bit of a dip down here over towards the Rockies. Uh, this is a lee side trough on the Rocky Mountains, and this is also creating a little bit of enhanced lift uh, currently over the Western Plains, specifically the Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle, back down or out towards Kansas. We are going to see some severe weather that way for a couple of days in a row. Not, again, a huge organized severe weather threat, just a more uh, kind of typical dry line setup. We've got just enough lift with this lee side trough. That's going to lead to some stormy activity. But most of the real storms are up into Canada right now and leaving most of us uh, you know, pretty quiet here over the lower 48. Like I said, I don't get too excited. That will change by the time we get into next week. You can see this as well on our surface map. This is what it looks like out there this afternoon. We've got that storm up into Canada, actually producing some snow up that way. We've got that other storm, but again, most of the action up into Canada. And then that stalled out frontal boundary, bringing that rain into the southeast that we're going to talk about here coming up next in just a moment. Before we do, though, I do want to briefly show you the severe weather outlook uh, from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, so this is for this afternoon. Uh, you'll notice uh, the highest threat level we have is a slight risk. That's a level two out of five there in the yellow. That includes Lubbock, Wichita, uh, back out towards portions of Oklahoma, Midland, Texas, San Angelo, and uh, just kind of into this corridor towards Woodward, Oklahoma. Uh, not a big deal today, but really anybody shaded in on the map, whether that's dark green or the yellow, could see some strong storms today. As for the tornado threat, yeah, not really high. Just a couple areas we're watching here back towards Kansas and into western Texas. Not a big deal. The bigger threat today, <clears throat> excuse me, I think is going to be strong straight line winds from Raleigh, Charlotte, uh, really anywhere across that frontal boundary towards Atlanta, Birmingham into New Orleans, and then up into... Again, portions of the plains. As for hail today, could also see a little bit of hail in those same areas. We skip to tomorrow. You'll notice the severe threat dies down in the east. Could still see thunderstorms anywhere in that light green, but the severe weather threat, again, kind of just focuses on that lee side troughing back out towards the Rockies. Tomorrow's tornado threat, again, the same kind of general area where we're closest to that enhanced lift with a little bit of extra spin. Maybe could get a brief isolated tornado. Not expecting a significant tornado, but nonetheless could still produce one. Wind, though, and once again, hail going to be the big threats for your Tuesday afternoon out here into the plains where a couple supercells could mature and uh, again create some of those damaging hazards. 
We bring it on into Thursday. This is day three. You notice again, anyone in the light green could see a thunderstorm. The severe weather threat though, kind of in that same area out towards the plains. All right, so that's a look at the near term severe weather maps from the Storm Prediction Center. Let's go ahead and take a look at the models now and start analyzing some of that data. All right, this is the latest brand new run of our high resolution rapid refresh model showing that potential for severe weather and just storminess in general. Uh, quite well. Like I've been saying the past couple of days, there's not, um, in, in today's video as well, there's not a single storm system we're watching. So you're going to notice as I kind of continue the map ahead in a time, it's just going to be general afternoon convection. So we'll start here. This is about 4 p.m. this evening. Uh, actually, no, we'll back it up even more to kind of when many of you are watching. This is around the noon hour. Uh, you can see we've got that leftover frontal boundary that's leading to some storminess and shower activity down south. We've got some showers up into Minnesota, Wisconsin. Got a couple leftover showers into the northeast. Again, just scattered areas of um, uh, we'll say disgruntled weather maybe, it's probably not the best word to use, but uh, my brain is blanking on uh, good uh, synonyms for what I'm thinking of. But uh, either way, we'll move it ahead into this afternoon and this is when things could become a little bit more severe and notice how these storms pop up around the evening. This is right around sunset tonight, 8 p.m. or so. We could get a severe storm anywhere from Raleigh all the way down to New Orleans and heck even towards Houston. Big corridor here where we've got Gulf moisture, just enough lift from that stalled out frontal boundary and uh, again, could see a couple brief storms. Now, that's one area to watch. The other area is kind of in here where we have the pink on the map. That's our threat from the plains. And I'll draw a yellow area. It's this yellow area within that pink that's really the bigger concern for supercells today. And that's where I think we'll have the highest in severe weather potential. But again, anywhere you see a storm on the map could become strong to severe. Uh, so just plan for that. But we could use the rain in some of these areas. The Carolinas specifically have been quite dry this spring. We'll take the rain, so not necessarily a bad thing. That gets us into the overnight. This kind of continues. We get more of an MCS kind of forming there into Texas uh, or even... Um, a bit of a you know hybrid of a convective system just from the leftover supercells or storms or multi-cells, whatever forms this evening, congeal into a line of storms. Probably a pretty good lightning show overnight moving towards Dallas, Fort Worth, likely dying out before they get there, though. This is tomorrow morning. Yeah, more of the same. Scattered showers. We get to tomorrow afternoon. I notice another blow-up of convection. Again, anyone really here could see a strong and severe storm outside of the northeast, I'd say. The northeast, you can see, has this high pressure kind of helping you folks out, keeping it dry up that way. But anywhere else, the southeast, the Ohio Valley, uh, back out into the southern plains, the Mississippi River Valley, again, could see a strong and severe storm. Once again, Wednesday afternoon, heavy rain, lightning, a couple of areas of gusty winds, and maybe some hail could be a concern. Again, though, you get back out into the plains, back here towards Texas, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, that's where we'll have more of a supercell threat. So that's where the severe threat will be the highest uh, really throughout the week ahead. Again, this being tomorrow evening, Wednesday, April 24th, uh, or 23rd rather, I guess. Uh, I have to get my Zulu time uh, not mixed up with my uh, American time zones here. Uh, keep it going though into, again, the overnight of Wednesday, more the same. It's just that summertime pattern. You're waking up Thursday morning as far out as the model goes. I yeah, guess what, more of the same, waking up with the leftover kind of mesoscale convective complex into the plains from the day before, a couple leftover showers in the southeast, starting to feel like Groundhog Day, isn't it, by this point, I think. Uh, you'll hopefully be pretty used to the pattern as uh, we keep on tracking it. Now, let's give you the latest on some of these ingredients. I do want to talk about the supercell threat, not off the charts by any means, but we take a look at our supercell composite from the NAM model, and we might have a newest run of the NAM. Let's see. Uh, yeah, the newest run of the NAM goes out hopefully just far enough. So this is also brand new information. Supercell composite, here's this afternoon, uh, Tuesday, uh, and uh, you do see we have some ingredients for supercells. Once you start getting these brighter colors, supercells become more likely. And generally speaking, where you have supercells, you have the higher threat of large hail, strong winds, and maybe even a brief spin-up tornado, because this setup doesn't have quite as much wind shear as some supercell days, but just enough to make the storms uh, rotate in general. Maybe not enough to quite produce a tornado and bring it all the way to the surface. That's this afternoon. We'll get into the overnight. You notice the threat kind of, uh, you know, lingers a little bit, but not quite as high as the evening hours, right around sunset. That's when the threat will maximize. Uh, and then we get into tomorrow morning. Threat's basically gone by that point. We've lost the instability. Here comes tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, another big blow up of supercell ingredients out here into Kansas, even in southern Nebraska, uh, into the foothills and the plains there of Colorado, back down to Oklahoma. Here for your Wednesday afternoon, dies down by Wednesday night, waking up Thursday morning, as far as the model goes right now, but you get the idea. The nighttime, kind of a little more quiet, the afternoon more active. Let's bring the map south a little bit. Here's this afternoon. Guess what? Big increase in supercell ingredients. 
Here's tomorrow morning. Guess what? It's died down. And then you'll never imagine what happens tomorrow afternoon, right? Yeah, another big blow up of ingredients for supercells as that afternoon heating kind of interacts with those boundaries. Again, could get a couple strong storms, some of which may try to rotate. And again, here we go. This gets us into Thursday afternoon on this one. Uh, you can see another blow up of ingredients by uh, the afternoon of Thursday. So to summarize, evenings and into the early overnight is going to be the core of the severe weather time frame. Uh, dies down by the morning hours, but could still have some scattered showers and then rinse and repeat that process today, tomorrow, and Thursday likely. And with that said, the good news is we can analyze a couple soundings here and it's going to be pretty similar for most places. So this is a sounding out of the plains over the next couple of days. I just kind of picked a generic sound. I think this is tomorrow. And it might actually be today, but most days are going to be pretty similar out here. The reason we could see a supercell or two is the hodograph. We've got just enough spin, especially in the low levels. Uh, our storm relative velocity is going to be just high enough to potentially produce, again, some supercells. Now, the tornado threat, you saw in all days, it's about 2%. Uh, you're thinking, all right, well, we've got supercells. Why not tornadoes? Well, we're really lacking surface moisture for most of us. Um, again, a lot of these storms where we have the shear are going to be way out of the desert side of the plains and we're not quite getting enough flow out of the Gulf to really uh, pump up the dew point values out there. So dew point in the 50s and 60s with warm surface temperatures, uh, that's going to kind of limit that potential uh, to get these low-level mesocyclones to form. So definitely mesocyclones in the mid-levels. These storms are going to be rotating well above our heads, but can that rotation stretch and uh, bring that vorticity all the way to the surface? Possible in a couple storms, but again, not expecting a big tornado day uh, today, tomorrow, uh, or Thursday for that matter with a sounding like this. But a lot of cape, large hail is going to be a concern. Uh, we've got a pretty dry sounding, like I said, at the surface, so that could increase downburst potential. Uh, so strong straight line winds, large hail, pretty looking storms, I'm sure, as well. That will be a threat out that way. Now, as for the southeast, again, we could see severe weather. This is a sounding for today in and around the Charlotte area. I'm a little biased as I uh, do live here, but uh, a pretty good cape potentially this afternoon. Now, this goes for anyone in the Carolinas, Georgia, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, or, or I guess Tennessee too, but Mississippi, Louisiana, that kind of corridor we talked about earlier. That's where you're going to get a sounding like this. A lot of instability for most folks. Um, but another thing to note here is in the mid-levels, we got a lot of dry air. So what that does is creates a lot of evaporational cooling inside the storm. That creates what we call water loading. That brings a lot of cold and dense air down to the surface. It ends up hitting the ground and splats out as a downburst. So I think strong straight line winds, maybe some uh, isolated uh, large hail will be possible with these storms today, tomorrow, uh, and Thursday, wind shear values, just not a lot going on here, folks. I mean, we got storm relative velocity barely cracking 100 at the 0 to 3 level, less than 50 at the lowest levels. So not going to get a tornado with a look like this. Probably not even really going to get a supercell. Maybe one supercell tries to mix in here, but not a big supercell looking sounding over the southeast. As for the plains, though, that's where we could see some of those rotating storms. Well, we've got severe weather in the near term. I think the pattern continues as we end out April, and I think potentially a more robust period of severe weather uh, by the time we get to the final days of April, about a week or so from now. now the reason we're not seeing these big, strong, low pressures uh, cranking across the U.S., well, it's that upper-level map we've been telling you about. We've got this big ridge and just kind of zonal flow that's running into this ridge. Uh, so we just don't have a lot of blue. We don't have a lot of troughing on the map. That's what you would need for a big storm system. But that'll change, I think, as we go through this week. Again, more of what we just talked about, these afternoon storms. Uh, here we go, though. This is Saturday afternoon. You can see on the European ensembles, yeah, some blue returning to the map. We got a big trough dipping down out west. Uh, not hard to find here and a big ridge in front of it. So it's going to be important for a couple reasons. The ridge is going to bring a lot of humid and warm air northward. The trough is going to bring the lift, the cold air, and the dry air. Uh, and you get all those ingredients together. Yeah, that's a classic recipe for a big blow up of severe weather potential right over the heart of the country. By the time we get to next Monday, uh, really we'll say next Sunday starting then, but it really especially next Monday here, then potentially into Tuesday, uh, that could try to keep on working through. Now, will it cross all the way uh, through the lower 48? Yesterday, it looked like yes. Uh, some of the models had backed off a little bit, but I think either way, the plane's definitely going to get severe weather out of this. We can it crack through that ridge and get all the way into the east, you know, to be seen. Uh, and then you can see by the time we get further out into time, uh, we'll see how the pattern evolves. But it looks like maybe to start May, troughing returns to the east and ridging out west. Maybe that returns severe weather closer to the eastern seaboard. Uh, we'll see. But right now, let's talk about that big storm system potentially, uh, again, by the early part of next week. Storm predictions that are already highlighting what I'm seeing in the models. They've got that 15% chance for severe weather. Uh, this is for day seven. So next Tuesday, Minneapolis, Sioux Falls, Aberdeen, 
Rochester, basically all of Iowa into eastern Nebraska, central and eastern Kansas, all the way down into Kansas City, much of northern Missouri, and he even comes down and just kisses Oklahoma there uh, as well. So this is a pretty far north severe weather threat. We're in that time of the year, this warm air really surging north. Places as far as the Dakotas and Minnesota could get in on severe weather with this pattern coming up. Let's take a look at it in the models. What could this look like? Well, uh, again, I think going to bring some potential for severe weather. Let me back up the map. We'll do uh, Thursday afternoon. This is what we've been talking about. Yeah, more of what uh, we've been discussing. A big area of potential for afternoon storms on Thursday. We do get one little piece of energy. Again, it's been hanging along that lee side trough of the mountains uh, really now through Thursday. By Thursday afternoon into Friday, kind of tries to break containment here and work eastbound. I could bring maybe a bit more of an organized rainfall, maybe even a severe weather threat Friday afternoon into the Ohio Valley, portions of the southeast. Uh, not overly concerned about it, but again, could bump up your threat just a little bit. The bigger threat, though, looming behind it. Here we go. I will pause it. This is Saturday afternoon. Notice this big upper level low working into California, mountain snow, uh, and then rain for just about everyone else out there as we end out April. Gets into the Rockies, and yeah, this is not a look you want to see. This is by next Sunday. Very strong low pressure, 988 millibars. Very strong front here, working out of the Rockies into the plains. Yeah, that's a recipe, unfortunately, for severe weather that pulls up into the northern tier. So I've got that severe weather potential in the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, and surrounding areas. And then that storm pulls up into Canada. And then maybe after that, again, another storm tries to work all the way through the east in the 7 to 10 day range. But for now, the big focus is on this big storm. Uh, one big trend overnight in the models is it has shifted northward a little bit. We know the storm's going to happen. Is it going to be further north, further south? Could shift back and forth a little bit, but uh, either way, it uh, looks to be a potent storm that's likely to produce big severe weather potential by the start of next week as we end out the month of April. Severe weather ingredients on the European ensembles. Let me move this back to a time slot that'll actually show all the data we need. Uh, here we go. We'll move it ahead into time. You can see just kind of scattered severe weather potential over the next couple of days. Then we get to this weekend here, Sunday afternoon. And then by the time we get to Monday, much bigger severe weather threat begins to kind of build in here. Anywhere from Minnesota all the way back down to Texas and Oklahoma, according to the European ensembles, could see severe weather. And then that tries to shift east. Check this out. By next Tuesday, another big area of severe weather. Uh, so you get the point. A lot of folks are going to be under the gun with this coming storm. Still details to iron out. Will it get all the way to the east? Uh, you know, potentially. Right now the models kind of kill it off once it hits the Mississippi a little bit. Um, but uh, we'll see where that goes. And then, you know, we'll, we'll keep on tracking it for you. All right. Final thing we'll talk about, per usual, are temperatures. Yeah, with this big spring-like pattern, guess what? It's going to stay uh, spring-like with the temperatures uh, through much of the country. So red are the above average temperatures, blue below average. Uh, here's the week ahead. Yeah, a lot of red on the map. This is by tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, not hard to find those above average temperatures for really most of the low, lower 48 in general, whether you're in the Northeast, the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, back out West into California. Uh, a lot of folks seeing those warmer temperatures and just hangs around for a while. Uh, by the time we get to, uh, let's see here, this coming weekend, now this is, let me back it up a little bit. Actually, this is um, a Saturday afternoon, and then we get into Sunday afternoon here. Well, potential, some of the models are showing a little bit of maybe a, kind of a back end uh, or backdoor cold front uh, potentially working through the east. Would not make it cold by any means, but could bring temperatures back down to average compared to the above average that we we're going to see for much of this week, meaning highs maybe more in the 70s than the 80s. Still nice. Uh, but we'll watch for that. And then out in front of the next storm system, we're going to get a huge increase in temperatures. Check out next Tuesday afternoon, yeah, maybe 20 degrees above average uh, into the Midwest in the Ohio Valley. Yeah, that's quite warm and really going to fuel up the atmosphere for that next storm system as we get towards next Tuesday. All right, folks, that's all I got for you on this, uh, well, this Tuesday as well, right? Uh, so hopefully you'll have a good one. Stay safe out there and uh, definitely have the umbrella handy and uh, have a way to get those watches and warnings should any storms turn severe.